Hey Mike here, I've been testing the new Polygon Siskiyou T6 which has just been released and is now being sold via Bikes Online. This is part of the Siskiyou range for Polygon uh, which has both the D-Series, the T-Series and the N-Series. Being the T-Series, this is a trail bike and I've got the 29er variant which has got a 140mm travel fork and 135mm of rear travel. The T6 is a new entry level model using the same frame as the already popular T7 and T8, but this one sells for $22.99. Let's take a closer look. So let's take a closer look at the $2,299 Polygon Siskiyou T6 trail bike. So first up, it's got the same frame as the T7 and the T8, which both sell for $28.99 and $38.99 respectively. The differences really are in the group set. So this has a 10 speed Dior drivetrain with two piston Shimano MT200 brakes and also the suspension. So you get a RockShox Recon fork on here at 140 mils and an Xfusion O2 Pro with rebound adjustment on the back. All in all though, it's still a very capable trail bike thanks to some wide entity rims and some wide V tires on there too. And I've had no problem getting them set up how I want them to ride, although that is with tubes. This doesn't uh, have uh, any tubeless tape installed or doesn't come with tubeless valves, but that would be a, a worthwhile addition. In terms of sizing, I've got a large Polygon Siskiyou T6 on test. It, Polygon are one of the brands that are still offering size specific wheel sizing. So in the small and the medium, you can have a 27 and a half inch wheel, but at medium, you can also get a 29 inch wheeled bike. Uh, if you get the 27 and a half inch model, you do get 150 millimeters of travel in the front and a full 140 in the back. So a little bit more travel with the smaller wheel size. Geometry on the large is really, uh, I, would take, I would say, a good take on modern trail geometry. So there's a 65 and a half degree head angle, a 480 mil reach on the large and a 76 and a half degree seat angle. What all that adds up to is quite a centered position. I found that with the seat, steeper seat angle, I'm right over the pedals when climbing um, and the length with the 480 mil reach is nice and stable on descents but with a fairly short 430 mil chain state, it's, it remains pr pretty active and agile. Um, some people might prefer something with a lot more stability, but if you're wanting to really charge uh, harder trails, you're possibly better looking at a bike like the Polygon Colossus. In terms of the frame, the Polygon Siskiyou T6 has all the features you find on the, in the rest of the Siskiyou range. It's got internal routing, it's got a threaded bottom bracket, it's got ISCG05 mounts for a chain guide, uh, and the back end is a linkage driven single pivot. Uh, the, you've got a full complement of bearings on all the pivot hardware at the front of the bike, although it is a bushing at the back end. Polygon have spec some quality uh, chain slap protection, and I've found that the bike is pretty quiet through the whole test period. In terms of setup, Bike Online sell the polygons as direct to consumer, which means this bike came in a box and I built it up at home. I didn't have to do much. I just put the bars on the stem and connected the dropper post and put that in, uh, put the front wheel in, checked everything over, but it was all working really nicely. I do find that the polygon, the bars that polygon spec from Entity don't have as much sweep as I'd like. I would prefer something with more sweep and I would really recommend setting this up uh, tubeless. So get a tubeless kit at time of purchase. Uh, for suspension, you've got an air spring front and rear. Uh, I have a shock pump at home, so having that set up was easy. I would recommend that you buy one when you're getting this bike because to get the most out of the suspension, you're gonna really wanna fine tune the settings. I actually ran a little bit firmer than probably most people uh, would just so I had about 25% sag in the rear, and I was actually about 20% over the recommend, re recommended settings in the RockShox Recon fork too, just to maintain the ride height that I wanted. Otherwise, I just put my pedals on, set my, set my seat height, and hit the trails. So as a $2,300 trail bike, I was really interested to see how the Siskiyou T6 would ride. Earlier this year, we tested eight hardtails under two grand, and pretty impressed with how they all handled um, having a whole lot of fun on the trails. For not much more, Polygon are delivering a highly capable trail bike, and at $2,300, I wasn't sure how, how well it was actually gonna ride, but I shouldn't have been worried. Pedaling up a hill to get to the trails, I'm gonna admit this wasn't the most fun bike to pedal just because it is close to 17 and a half kilos, but in terms of sitting down and, and spinning away, the rear suspension system remains really um, 
uh, inactive, barely any movement. And so you do, you do get there, it's just a heavy bike, uh, mostly from some chunkier wheels with a, a 35 mil wide entity rim and some large V, -rub, v rubber uh, on there too. But that's kind of what really works for you on the descents too. The shock only has rebound damping, so you can't uh, lock it out and really just smash the pedals. It's not the bike for that. But if you want to pedal up some fire trails or work your way up some technical climbs, the Polygon really does that very well. With the geometry, the um, steeper seat angle keeps you fairly well centered. The head tube's not overly tall, so I quite like that. I like a lower bar position than some people do. So I found the front wheel tracks well on single track climbs around corners, um, but might need a little bit more input um, to keep you with the front wheel grounded and tracking if you prefer a higher bar position. On previous Siskiyous I've ridden in the D range, the, the cross country 120 mil variant, I've found the ground clearance hasn't been what I wanted. Um, I was often um, dag the pedals on, on rocks, but on this bike with some slightly shorter cranks and running it a little bit firmer at, at about 25% sag, I didn't have too many issues. Uh, and so that was a nice bonus. Most people won't buy a trail bike to climb though. Um, so how did it descend? I think if you've seen any of the recent Polygon reviews that we've been doing here at AMB, you'll know that we're pretty impressed with the handling of the bike, and that is no different with the T6. As soon as I was pointing down, the, the handling of the bike really came, came to the front. So it's very balanced, and the high volume tyres and really stout wheels uh, work hand in hand with balanced handling to mean that it's a really fun bike to ride. Whether that's popping off one small feature to the other or changing lines, the bike really rewards it and, and really rewards that input too. At a 430 mil back end, it's pretty short. It's shorter than my XC bikes have. Um, so it does change direction quite nicely. Um, some people might prefer some more stability, but I think it is offset by the length that the bike has got and the slacker head angle too. So the stability is there. Obviously, if you want something just for charging shoots, again, you probably should be looking at an e-bike, not a 140 mil travel trail bike. Where the Polygon Siskiyou really shines is on flow trails and trails where you've got um, you know, select hits one after the other. It really changes direction um, very admirably. And while I can negotiate steep rutted trails, uh, you know, probably more, more my own failing there than the bikes, it has a lot more fun on the high speed flow trails, on the, on the machine built trails that you'll find at most of our local trail centers. That's where it really comes alive and is a lot of fun to ride and is very capable. The suspension isn't complex suspension and the number one tool in your arsenal to get that working well will be a shock pump and maybe a notepad to, to record the best settings for you. It does get a little bit packed up in repeated hits, so a lot of high frequency hits like through a rock garden. It's more in the back and, and the front obviously could be a little bit stiffer being the recon, it's not the biggest fork legs. But again, this is a $2,300 trail bike. I don't think we can expect that it's going to be working uh, as, as best as a, a bike costing two to three times as much as this one through those conditions. As is, I was really impressed by it. In terms of any changes that I'd want to make if this bike were my own, there's only a few. I'd possibly swap out the handlebars to something with a bit more sweep. That's a personal preference, but I have found on the two polygons I've tested recently that the bar shape's not the most comfortable for me. I also found the braking isn't amazing on the really steep terrain. On a lot of uh, trail trails in my local area, which are nominally blue rated, they're fine. But it's a two piston brake with the simple uh, metal rotors from Shimano and basic resin pads. And with a, um, the 180 mil rotors were a little bit out of their depth on the steeper trails. As a first point, I'd look to a better rotor and pad material once you've worn them out, um, but you may want to look at a brake upgrade down the track. If that's something what you're thinking, you might also be better looking at the Siskiyou T7, which does have a four piston brake on the front wheel. The other change I'd make would be making sure you set the tires up tubeless. You can get a lot more out of your, your tire and wheel setup if you are running tubeless, both in reliability for not getting a flat, but also having a little bit more wiggle room in running lower pressures, possibly with an insert in the back, you'll drop some weight as well. So who's it for? Basically anyone who wants a high value trail bike. The Siskiyou T6 has all the ride capabilities of the T7 and T8 in terms of the frame and the handling with a simpler group set. I had no worries with the 10 speed group set and the 11 to 42 range um, from the Shimano Dior system. 
It's a rock solid group set and will serve you well. Uh, I did find that there was lots of traction from the V rubber and the wide entity rims and with the appropriate setup, the suspension was very supportive. I think if you know you want to ride your bike hard, then you're probably uh, better looking at a, the T7 or T8 with higher end componentry because you will get a little bit more reliability and uh, adjustability out of that. And if you're really just after an enduro bike, then you should look at something in the Colossus range instead. As is, I think Bikes Online and Polygon have managed to set a new benchmark for what you can do with a $2,300 trail bike. And I like that this puts a trail build into the Siskiyou range as opposed to riders getting onto one of the D cross country uh, bikes and having to build it up to be capable of how they want to ride. It's a great move from Bikes Online and Polygon. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you catch all our coming videos. Thanks for watching.